You've never had control like this with your Sims on DS before. Maybe I'll make my Sim a chef, or a cop, or a criminal. I know, a mad scientist would be cool. Now I'm gonna build a chill house for my Sim to hang out in. The building tools in DS are amazing. You can make all kinds of rooms, choose from lots of walls, windows, floors, cool furniture, and fun accessories. It looks like everyone's having a good time. There are a lot of cool places to go and things to do with your Sims. The gym, they can make some snacks, fishing, hey Picasso, nice moves. Your Sim can go to the art gallery or just hang with friends. Oh wait, don't forget the graveyard. As always, you can help or hinder your Sims with their goals. More options, more possibilities, more powers to do whatever sick thought that pops into your dirty little mind. Now, you move with either the D-pad or the four face buttons, which leaves everything else mapped to the touchscreen. I was originally put off by this. I mean, why waste every button on movement? Why can't I just press a button to interact with something? Well, while it may seem gimmicky, after a while, you'll start to appreciate this setup. Because every action uses the touchscreen, you aren't constantly switching between two input methods. This means you don't need to awkwardly put aside the stylus while pressing a button, then take it back out when you need the touchscreen. It's a simple control scheme that works surprisingly well for this type of game. Later on, you'll gain access to various vehicles, which you can use to get around faster. This is definitely a welcomed addition, as one of my biggest complaints with the previous game was how slow you moved. We got the new Nintendo DS. What it's got, got stand for? wireless multiplayer and some cool stuff. What the? Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. DS.
Lost in Blue, a survival game about two teens forced to live on an abandoned island after a shipwreck. The art is somehow intriguing and mystifying. The premise is engaging. The premise? You are Keith, a high school senior stranded on an uninhabited island from some sort of cruise boat crash. Or so it seems, until you stumble upon Sky, another high schooler that was on the same boat as you. After a mishap where Keith destroys Skye's glasses, leaving her legally blind, the two team up to survive on the island and try and find a way off. Throughout the coming days, the two will have to learn to find food, build shelter, and explore the island. In the process, they'll come across wild animals, ancient temples, and perhaps something even more dangerous. I'll be upfront and honest with you right now. I'm not really a huge Harvest Moon fan. The only one that I ever played was the first on the SNES, and while I did devote many hours to it, I found that it got real boring real fast. Rune Factory, though, is a different beast entirely. Instead of only being concerned with your farm and the girls that you date, now there's a plethora of activities to fill your time, from fishing to farming to shopping to crafting, and most importantly, the addition of combat. That's what really sets this series apart from the aforementioned Harvest Moon. And while the first two games in the series had combat as well, it just wasn't done near as well as this. of our cities, there is a war brewing between those who want to protect our world and those determined to destroy it. Which side will you choose? Two games available on Nintendo DS with completely unique storylines, missions, and characters. Choose from over 30 vehicle forms. Scan, customize, and upgrade. Face off with four friends in local multiplayer mode. Transformers Autobots and Transformers Decepticons help your side in the global battle. The games are distinct on their own. They are not the same game. It's not taking one character and putting them in the same environment. We have unique characters, we have unique environments, we have unique story. We've got these two factions, we've got Autobots, we've got Decepticons, we've got this giant city, we've got these different environments. And at one point when we were doing this, it's like, you know what, we've got so much here, we could actually probably do two games. And the developers we picked for this, Vicarious Visions, are I think the, the quintessential best development team out there for the DS. It's a big game, it's epic, there's tons of characters. Uh, we really play up the fact that there's a whole wireless system where you can play locally with four players with both platforms. So it was one of these things that we wanted to make a big game for the DS and I think we have. This DS original is just as fun, deep, and violent as the console Grand Theft Auto games. It features all the great open world elements that the franchise is known for, with a ton of things that only the Nintendo DS can offer. 
Chinatown Wars follows Huang Li, a spoiled rich kid son of a triad boss, delivering a symbolic sword to his uncle Kenny after his father's murder. The visuals might not match the console versions, but Chinatown Wars looks outstanding for a DS game. The 3D engine runs fast and smooth, and it features a ton of little effects. Chinatown Wars captures nearly every aspect of the console design and adds several new elements. For example, you'll still be able to jack anything with wheels and drop it all over Liberty City, but some cases may not be so simple. You might have to hotwire or wrench the ignition, or hack the car alarm before you can drive off. My name is Dan. Dan Miles. Underground street racer. Unstoppable. Or so I thought. The day I was arrested, I got two choices. A life behind bars, or a life behind the wheel. My first undercover mission? Take down a terrorist leader bent on wiping out New York City. No kidding. The badge is fast, but the street is faster. Cop the Recruit from 2009 is a Grand Theft Auto-esque open world game which features some of the most impressive visuals on the DS. It's developed by Velez and Jubail, who you might recognize as the developers of V-Rally 3 and Driver 3 on the GBA, so it's not too surprising that this game is so remarkable. Speaking of Driver, this game was originally meant to be a game in that series, and it even has the same sound effects and city as Driver Parallel Lines. As a fan of the Driver games, playing this game was pretty novel. Somehow VD Dev got this game running at 60 FPS. There's a huge variety of locations and things to do with a relatively detailed rendition of New York City. Interiors are also densely detailed, and look how the streets are filled with traffic and pedestrians. It's incredible. 